This is the first time in my life I've ever seen one of these beetles up close. And this is actually a female stag beetle. At first, when I lifted up the rock over there when we were clearing around this water feature for this latest wildlife pond, I thought it was a lesser stag beetle. But actually, it's a bit bigger and this is a female because although the stag beetles that we uh, perceive in our heads have these giant front jaws, which of course they do, the males, the females of which this is, actually have a lot smaller jaws and the males use their fantastic jaws for wrestling other males for females and territory of course. But this individual was found under a rock as I say and the reason she's here is actually because uh, she's looking for somewhere to lay her eggs and they actually lay their eggs in rotting timber so that the grubs or the larvae uh, which are these quite large fleshy white grubs uh, can actually eat the rotting timber and um, yeah amazing life cycle and the, the actually the back of this water feature has some upright old oak sleepers that we are looking to replace so uh, I think I'll actually get some of these old sleepers and put them upright in some of the borders around the garden so that they can still leave some habitat for these amazing amazing beetles look at that <laughs> you wouldn't think you'd find that in the UK raise my observation of a female stag beetle to this absolute beast of an insect. Look at that. This is obviously the male. We've just found two of these and these rotten oak logs that we're just moving at the back of this wildlife pond that we're reinstating. And I'm going to safely put him in some new habitat behind me, don't worry. But what an absolutely amazing creature. I don't think I'd want to be on the receiving end of those jaws. Look at that. And they use those jaws for wrestling with other males, uh, for females and for territory. What an incredible looking creature. So the best way that you can provide habitat for these amazing animals is to actually install some upright uh, rotten logs, a bit like these are in the ground, and then the females will come along and lay their eggs in them if you're fortunate enough to attract them. Both the male and female of this species in one day. What an incredible sight. I'm going to put him now in some rotten logs that I've moved from this existing stack and he can carry on his daily routine. Wow. So many of you may remember the recent videos that I've been tweeting about the male and female stag beetles, absolutely phenomenal insects that I found whilst creating this latest wildlife pond uh, just outside of Colchester. And the next discovery has been so phenomenal, I've had to bring in a uh, Marginally good expert, would you say? Marginal expert, you what? <laughs> <laughs> this is Dr. Ross Piper, for those of you that don't know on Twitter. And um, Ross was so intrigued because he's never actually, even as an entomologist, actually seen uh, the larvae of these amazing beetles, have you? No, I haven't. So Joel uh, found a couple of these larvae when he was uh, digging the new pond in some old uh, oak railway sleepers. Um, this is one of the larvae here. So these are serious beasts. Let me show the yeah. camera. That's one chunky beetle larva. Okay, <laughs> so these take anywhere between like three and seven years to complete their development and they'll be feeding on rotten wood often when it's buried. It could be, you know, an old stump or even in this case some railway sleepers. Um, but yeah, the, you know, these are phenomenal creatures. Like Joe's already shown you the, the adults, you know, which are some of our most spectacular insects. But look at these larvae. These are serious. So these will spend all that time in that habitat, munching that wood and other material. Uh, and it's this that is the, the, probably the most important part of the life cycle really. This is what's going to do all the growing 
and all the feeding and then the adults just there to have all the fun to do some mating <laughs> and to do the dispersing um, but it's not quite it's not actually that common to see the larvae because often you have to be digging around to find them in the right sort of habitats but because they're a protected species if you do ever find any it's very important you put them back exactly where you found them or maybe dig a, a pit nearby where you can put some rotten wood where they can continue to feed and to do their development and I believe oak, ash and elm are some of the best ones, aren't they? Yeah, I mean, you know, they'll feed on all sorts of things, but um, yeah, they do like those. Um, they've even been found in things like lilac stumps, yeah. all sorts of things, yeah. Um, so I'm not really too bothered. It's more about the sort of state of the, of the decay of the wood, really, yeah. rather than the species. Um, but a fab thing to see, and where we are at the moment is a bit of a sort of a uh, hotbed of, of stag beetle activity in Essex as part of Essex. So Joel's already seen the adults, and then lo and behold, he finds loads of larvae too. It looks like he's just leaving you a little deposit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean with all that feeding there's a lot of pooing too, so they do some <laughs> seriously big poos and I've done lots on their hands already. Um, Amazing so yeah, things though, aren't they? You'd think, think they were tropical, wouldn't you really? Yeah, I mean, you know, um, these are some of our biggest insects. Um, yeah, and you know, not out of place really in the tropics and it's fab to see them. So it's spectacular creatures. You can see all along the body, other sides of the body here, the spiracles through which they breathe. And then also inside the body, because the exoskeleton is so thin, you can even see the trachea, which are the breathing tubes. Um, and they're very, fairly delicate beasts, actually. So you can imagine any animal like uh, you know, a bird or a mammal will find these. You know, this would be like a serious amount of protein for them. So they do have lots of predators too. Breakfast, lunch and dinner in one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Serious snack. Oh, fab. Lovely well, stuff. Well, I hope that's given you a nice little insight into uh, what is a, a very rare... Uh, grub in that in my eyes these days isn't it you know you don't often find these I'd, i've not met anybody right, that's right. really found them but right. of course you wouldn't unless you were digging for them which of course is not advised joel so, was uh, joel was actually digging for them purposely yeah <laughs> so as we said yeah because they're protected if you do ever find it in your garden it's important if you find the larvae to uh, make another hole for them nearby or put them exactly where you found them which is exactly um, what we're going to do now. We've retained some of the old rotting oak sleepers and we're going to put them back in upright in the ground. And obviously these guys will want to be underground on that rotting timber. So we're going to create some specialist stacks similar to the habitat or very basically it is this habitat that they were found on originally. So that's going to be just moved slightly to a different part of the garden. Uh, and of course, if you are looking to move the habitat for any reason, then of course it's important to keep all that, even if it's just a crumbly material, isn't it? Because yeah, that's yeah, what yeah, that's what yeah. they'll be eating. Yeah, try and keep it all together so they've got something to feed on. If you just chuck them straight in the soil, then they're going to die. So they need that. They need that stuff, whether it's you know uh, decaying timber or the wood mold, the really sort of decayed timber, and that's what they eat. So yeah, we'll go and get my new home now. Lovely stuff. Well done, Joel. Good man. Cheers.